All right, guys, we're back. Hematology, part two of our little lecture here. Uh, and let's figure out some of the management techniques that we're going to use for these, uh, uh, for the, any type of the blood problem that you might have. Um, again, uh, your general assessment and management, uh, again, a patient with an a infection or white blood cells uh, or transfusion reactions, they're probably going to end up having a fever of some sort, and they develop a hemodynamic instability because of that, okay? And so, uh, again, acute hemodynamic compromise is found in patients with anemia second to acute blood loss, coagulation, or autoimmune defects. So... In general words, is, is expect a fever, expect a little bit of low blood pressure with these, and expect things not to be normal. It might have blockages that cause problems, okay? And again, you need to recognize that, number one, you can't treat these. You can start treatment in the field, get your IV, get fluids going in certain cases. But again, they're probably going to require a transfusion or other definitive care. And again, if you got questions, again, medical control is a very good thing to do. Again, just like any other call, uh, again, ABCs, make sure that you, uh, any, any type of life-altering uh, bleeding, we need to make sure that we cure. And overwhelming infections can cause trouble with red blood cell production, okay? So don't spend time attaining vital signs during your primary assessment. ABCs, critical, unstable, you decide whether they are sick or not sick, and let's get them moving, okay? For trauma patients, again, unresponsible medical patients, they're considered life-threatening, of course. You should you should already know that in your primary assessment. Again, and get your good good get a good sample on these folks if you can all right again a uh, patient with hematologic projects may suffer syncope yes there's not oxygen being delivered there, there's a blockage somewhere uh, they have a decrease circulating okay uh, you need to ask about bleeding or uh, again gi being upset might be it actually bleeding into the gi tract Black tarry stools. Do we have any blood or vomit or coffee ground emesis? Okay. Uh, again, uh, look at your bleeding of the gums, by the way. Uh, look for that. Look at signs of changes in urination, if they've been bleeding or peeing blood. Uh, again, menstrual problem patterns that they have it. If they've got any allergies, any medicines they might be on, especially if they're on a bleeding medicine, something that's going to affect the bleeding. Okay. Do they have a history of hemophilia, sickle cell disease? cancers again cancers destroy bone marrow and yes that uh, the leukemia patient okay so they can destroy white or red blood cells in that case okay again uh, inquire about the social habits and again uh, the last oral intake and anything that you might start looking for that pathology that might be causing that problem all right uh again just remember weak and dizzy that can be a lot of things could it be a cardiovascular problem? But if there's no red blood cells going through the system or there's a decreased amount of red blood cells, it's going to give them that feeling of weakness and dizziness. All right. Uh, again, jaundice is usually a sign of a liver disease. OK. And, and uh, if they're, they have a reddish appearance, that's usually your polycythemia. Uh, if, if they have anemia, they usually are, are pallor. And then they can have tiny little red dots on their skin that they're having bleeding issues. And that would be an example of petechiae. So this is our, our typical jaundice patient. Yay. Uh, you don't shoot till you see the yellow of their eyes. All right. By the way, purpura or big purple blotches. And uh, so this would be an example of petechiae. And I wanted to see if they had the purpura. No, again, your purpura is a big purple uh, splotches. And then you could have the hemodynamic reaction with that. Um, your lymphatic system, uh, again, is usually affected early. And the reason that you know that is, is because the lymph system is what returns it. But it also collects the white blood cells. Swollen lymph nodes. Next underneath the arms, the groin area, they can swell, cause problems. That's because there's so much uh, of the macrophages that have picked up uh, trash material and that goes to the lymph system to help destroy them faster, okay? Again, and, and by the way, uh, in the GI tract, there's a little, uh, if you've got GI bleeding, uh, be aware of this one, gang. Uh, it, it actually forms a laxative. It wants to get rid of that, okay? So, yeah, it's going to be pooing it, all right? Uh, by the way, epistaxis is kind of a common thing, and it is one of the emergencies that we do go to. And, again, lean them. And usually, if they're hep epistaxis and there's no, per se, trauma to the area, be thinking that their blood pressure is high until proven otherwise, okay? Um, again, liver disease, by the way, slow blood clotting. And if the liver fails, uh, you will get an increased jaundice. And, of course, uh, continuing problems against uh, more 
more slow blood clotting with that. And again, remember, clotting has to happen within the body because otherwise you're going to get free bleeding everywhere. Okay. Uh, splenetic, uh, splenomegaly, again, usually your body tries to compensate by making more red blood cells and it destro destroys more in the spleen. The spleen works harder. It's just like any other organ. If it works harder, it's going to enlarge and get bigger. Okay. Uh, and again, they can get marginally, they can get markedly enlarged by the way. And the patients with sickle cell often will develop some sort of splenic infarct. Okay. And so they're going to get a lot of abdominal pain with that. All right. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, oh, also, in, in, because of where the spleen is, guys, it, it's in that upper left quadrant, kind of close to the heart. It's upper left quadrant and, and lower to the left thorax is, again, splenal, be thinking spleen on those, okay? Uh, uh, by the way, rheumatoid arthritis is your body attacking the joints, which is causing that swelling, causes it to where the joints really become immobile, okay? Uh, and also, it can hurt more when you've got sickle cell crisis going on. Uh, patients with anemia, by the way, they usually get short of breath, tachycardia, chest pain. In severe cases, it can actually lead to high, uh, higher heart rates, higher output, which then leads to heart failure easier. Okay. Uh, again, listen to, and these guys are going to look a lot like CHF patients. Okay. So listen to those lungs. They can also be a cause of chronic anemia. Okay. Uh, again, uh, Genital urinary problems, you can start getting blooding in the urine. It actually goes through the ureters. Uh, again, it's from the kidneys most of the time. Uh, you can have blood in the scrotal sac in male. Uh, heavy menstrual flows for ladies, which is, as we remember from, is menorrhea. Menorrhagia is from, and then we remember that from OB. And then you can actually have discharge, frank blood, bright red blood, dysfunctional urine bleeding, uh, again, from the vagina or, or, uh, that, or the, the female areas. Okay. Um, by the way, sickle cell can cause a priapism, so be aware of that. Yes, it can actually form where the blood can't drain out of the tubules. Okay. So very, very dangerous situation, by the way, in that. So what do we do for these folks? Again, uh, BVM as needed, uh, assess the circulatory system. Uh, fluid volume replacements are usually not always a bad thing here, okay? Unless they've got like a clotting factor problem. Again, usually you give them a little bit of saline, they start to feel better. Um, yes, for sickle cells, you can do analgesia for these guys. A little bit of fentanyl works, it goes a long way, okay? And then provide psychological support for both the patient and the family, especially if they don't know what's going on. It could be rather crazy, okay? Um, some terms you need to remember is uh, red blood cells disease. You got too many, too few. Polycythemia is an excess of red blood cells. Anemia is a lack of the red blood cells, okay? Or a lack of the hemoglobin on the red blood cells. Again, and usually uh, less than 37% in women, less than 40% in men is considered anemic. And again, due to the, the, the number of red blood cell production, uh, and that's that's usually the reason for it, okay? Um, and again, these usually are self-limiting, by the way. They can be acute or chronic, but they're self-limited. And every now and then, you might need to have the patient transfused. Uh, that does happen, and it is kind of a normal thing that goes on. Um, again, your anemia patients, uh, uh, again... Uh, it's usually a sign, not the disease itself. Usually it's due to hypoxia. Uh, you're going to get the headaches, dizziness, ringing in the ears, irritability, pallor, tachycardia. And uh, they can get angina pectoris from this as well, okay? So, again, uh, again, supplemental oxygen to help. But remember, you, to treat hypoxia with supplemental oxygen, just don't hyper-oxygenate these folks. 94 to 99 is, is again, is the target area you want to go to. Uh, your sickle cells, again, abnormally shaped uh, red blood cells, that would be an example of a sickle cell. Again, the, and it's usually due to a missing heme molecule, okay, or damaged or malformed heme molecules, okay? So, again, what happens is... In a sickle cell crisis, normal red blood cells start to deform and assume a sickle shape. This changes their hemodynamic flow patterns and may lead to occlusion of some blood vessels. Blockage of blood vessels leads to hypoxia a shortage of tissue oxygen, and necrosis, localized cell death. A crisis occurs when a cascade of events is triggered. Namely, localized hypoxia leads to anaerobic metabolism and the accumulation of acid metabolites. This in turn causes further sickling and the process is amplified into a crisis.
again, and that's one of the biggest problems that we end up getting. And the problem with the, the is a, it's 10 to 20 day cycle and 100. The good news is the sickle cells go away in 10 to 20 days. So if we can get them over that initial crisis, actually, they usually do pretty good with that. Okay. But again, they're going to start getting abdominal pain, muscular pains, pulmonary. They're having trouble breathing. Uh, they have trouble. Their, their kidneys hurt. And then the, the, they, they can have central nervous system crises. Okay. Um, the biggest thing to do with these guys, uh, again, in the short term for us, is is again i think fluids is probably your best bet here and then it, it and then and then use your fentanyl or, or your morphine for for pain control these guys anything that might dilate the blood vessels a little cause the system in the hole to dilate it's not necessarily a bad thing here but again usually if you can free up the blockage it, 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 you can get it uh white blood cell diseases uh leukopenia is too few white blood cells uh, and then uh, again uh, and then too many white blood cells is leukocytosis. And again, uh, these are the number of there. And it's usually due to a bacterial or fungal infection. And again, uh, the men, the magic number is five to, it says 9,000. And we, we can actually probably go up to 10 and you're okay. Uh, but again, it, white blood cell counts 10,800 to 2,300 per cubic milliliter of blood. is considered a bacterial infection. Oh, Scott, I'm not going to know that in the field. No, but you can feel lymph nodes. Okay. So, and, uh. And you can get see signs of, of increased white blood cell production, okay? Uh, again, feb fever is another good one for that, okay? Now, you can also get leukemias, which, uh, again, there's all kinds of different leukemias. And, uh, again, some are more aggressive than others, okay? And usually, though, when they have leukemia, which is cancer of the blood, they usually use some type of chemotherapy. And uh, the death is usually due to the, the infections and the bleeding because of that. And then the signs and symptoms may vary. By the way, if you do have a leukemia patient that is currently under leukemia treatment, put a mask on. Now, I know that we're doing it kind of right now for COVID, but these are the folks that, yeah, you need to give additional protection so they don't get sicker okay and whatever you do don't stick them out in a freaking er waiting room the the cesspool of bacteria out there uh you guys these guys usually have a compromised immune system again treat them in kind of a reverse sterilization all right so the bet again uh, consider fluids, by the way, for your leukemia. If they appear to be dehydrated, analgesics work good. And again, the biggest thing is, is they're going to need to get to where they can, somewhere where they can boost the immune system, either by giving them white blood cells or by giving them um, some sort of antibiotic to increase it. Your lymphomas, again, the, the malignant lymphomas of the Hodgkin's disease and then non-Hodgkin's. And long-term survival rate is better now for Hodgkin's lymphoma. So again, these are your these are the lymph glands where these uh, cancers of the lymphatic system are occurring. Okay, uh, again, you get fevers, night sweats, a lot of weight loss. Weight, uh, again, fatigue, uh, puritis. Uh, you know what? Time to look that one up. Uh, um, do, 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 do. I'm gonna have to hit the old because uh, I don't even know what it means. I'm surely sure I do, but. Uh, There we go. Uh, uh, itchy skin. Okay. Why don't we just call it itchy skin? All right. That's our, that's our, Scott's big word for the day. Puritis. There you go. Um, let's go, let's go back to there. Um, but again, um, again, treat them symptomatically with this. Okay. Again, the fever, night sweats, uh, you know, again, make sure that they're not dehydrated from this. Uh, thrombocytosis is when you got an increased number of platelets. And again, most people survive these. They'll, they'll do plasma phoresis on them. They usually do just fine. Uh, thrombocytopenia though, that's uh, when you have an abnormal decrease in platelets. And uh, again, it's usually because something's destroying the platelets uh, or, or the spleen's just kind of going crazy on those. Okay. And it's usually seen with children following a viral infection. And usually again, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a support mechanism when you got the itp patients okay and the, the, but they'll develop this purpura this nasty purple blotches all over them and so if you're seeing that usually that means that they've got a viral infection of some sort now your hemophiliacs usually your factor eight is a hemophilia a fact deficiencies in factor nine is hemophilia b or known as christmas disease uh again 
These guys, uh, hemophilia B is, by the way, more rare. But again, remember hemophilia, they just can't form blood clots, okay? They can't form the stable fi fiber clots. Uh, and again, they develop bruises, uh, joint bleeding. Uh, again, they, they, when they move, they get blood in the joints. Uh, the biggest thing with these guys is, is again, be attentive to the bleeding and, and, and make sure that that again, if they are bleeding, you gotta you're gonna have to maintain direct pressure and and hold it and keep it there for a very long people. Uh, be sure to prevent any additional trauma. And if the joint is uh got blood in it, a hematothrosis, again, splitting the extremity can help with the pain control of these guys. Uh, von Wilbron's disease. Yes, this is when they are missing factor eight. In addition to that, the platelet function is abnormal. It's usually an inherited disease, and it can be male or female. And again, excessive bleeding primarily after surgery. Okay, so if we've got if you got somebody with von Wildebrand's disease, again, you definitely need to make sure that the docs know that. DIC again, this usually happens. Uh, bleeding is a most frequent sign. It's usually by systemic activation of coagulation cascade. This is very common in trauma patients. After the initial, after the, 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 it's been attempting to do this clotting process for a long time. And the problem with this, guys, is, is it's usually a death sentence uh, for your trauma patients, okay? And again, uh, uh, again, if pre hospital care is, is very symptomatic, they need fresh frozen plasma or platelets. That's usually why they hang those in the trauma bay. They'll get them started on that so that they don't develop DIC, okay? Um, uh, your multiple myeliomas, by the way, these are cancers, uh, disorders of the plasma cells. Uh, very rarely found in people under the age of 40. And uh, again, it's a cancerous growth of a healthy cell and it re reduces the red blood cell production. So it makes, you, makes them essentially anemic. Okay, and they're also prone to infection because of that. And usually, they have to do chemotherapy. They may have to radiate, and sometimes even a bone marrow transplant for this. And again, for our our care, again, it's it's going to be supportive care to get those guys there. Uh, if they do have my, multiple myeliomas, get an IV started. Again, control your uh, fluid volumes uh, unless they're dehydrated. And again, it, anesthesias are you know using your fentanyl on these guys is a good thing. So there's a lot of diseases with the blood. Make sure you read those over in the book. The difference between red blood cell, white blood cell problems, and the ones that I've seen on the test, the sickle cells, uh, the um, uh, I've never seen von Wildebrand's disease. That's not to say that they won't be there. Um, and uh, again, the, the sickle cell crisis is the big ones. The leukemias are the other ones. Uh, that is the ones I've seen commonly on the test. So keep an eye out for those as you're reading. And uh, again, just remember that its function is uh, the, 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 the platelets. Remember what each component of the blood does. Red blood cells carry the oxygen. White blood cells destroy in, invaders. The, 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 the platelets, uh, in the very simple term, it, it, it forms clots. Okay. If you can remember that, you're already ahead of the game. All right. So, um, any, this is going to be in for that chapter.